Hey, Facebook, what's up? Waiting for Instagram. There's Instagram coming online. Hey, Facebook. Hey, Instagram. What's up? Happy rainy Thursday. It is rain. I'm sure you can probably see in my window right there if you look into the camera. You can see how it's pouring down rain. It is so crazy rainy here today in LA, which I don't mind. It's kind of nice to be inside in my sweats with the heater going. I'm feeling all cozy. Got my coffee here, although it's kind of late. I must admit I've been dragging my feet on doing this video. Um, and I don't know why. Um, you know, that's what we're going to talk about today is February um, energy transmission. We're also going to begin to open up some of the bigger themes that are starting to pop up for 2019. Um, and really, you know, in many ways, February at least, and I don't know, it may just sort of be what the theme of 2019 that seems to be unfolding. In many ways, it kind of feels like a homework assignment. <laughs> I know, like I can hear the collective, no, when I say that. Um, and you know, what I mean by that is not homework in the sense of like, here's the deal, right? Last year, I know, was a bear and a bitch and a monster and a nightmare and a challenge. And for many of us, it really was putting us to our paces. I think that, you know, last year was like going from amateur to pro, right? It was going from master or from student, from neophyte, from initiate, moving up to intermediate, to advanced, to master level. And in many ways, 2019 now is when we really begin to put those gifts, put our homework to use, put our gifts to work, put our, our education and our learning and our teaching and our tools and all of that stuff, our knowing, we're really beginning to put it to use, to actually practically apply it. You know, something comes up for me as I go through this experience and I think there's always this sense of like, but when is it going to be easy? When is it just going to be handed to me? When is it just going to be like I open the door and there it is what I'm waiting for, right? And, you know, I think there definitely will be moments of ease. There certainly will be moments of, you know, um, things just sort of magically appearing into our awareness. There will be moments of like, you know, miraculous circumstances and synchronicities and this you know, sort of the intersection of, of, of these moments where we're like, holy shit, things are just amazing right now. But in many ways, wouldn't you rather have the confidence in your abilities to manifest what you want, to bring to you what you want, to actively create, to consciously create, rather than just feeling like you're sort of waiting for it to show up, this sort of passive, powerless, like, well, I'm just waiting. I don't know. It's going to show up. I have no control. I have no power. And that's just not the case. And if anything, 2018 showed us exactly where our power lies. If anything, 2018 showed us exactly what it looks like when we create from that incomplete truth or that you know false premise that I'm powerless and that life is happening to me. And we're going to get into that in, in today's video in the energy transmission for February 2019. First, I want to share with you the upcoming energy gatherings for February. It is a full month. It is four Sundays. This is a four-part energy gathering where we are really going Going to continue this theme of creating a bigger container and that has been the theme and we're going to talk a little bit about January too and like have you been doing your homework have you been challenging your notions of what is possible of what you're capable of have you been sort of investigating where in your life perhaps you still have limitations that you are invested in and um, limiting beliefs that you are still supporting and hanging on to so that's what the energy gathering for February is going to be. It's four Sundays starting this Sunday. What's this Sunday? The 3rd. So the 3rd, the 10th, the 17th, and the 24th. Three, or excuse me, four Sundays from 12 to 2 p.m. Pacific time. As always, you can join from anywhere in the world via Zoom. As always, you will get an MP3 recording of each session. So even if you can't make it live, you can still join in and experience the conversation, the question and answer, the discussion, and the energy work. I've extended the energy gatherings for February to two hours. So it is going to be a lot like for those of you who are part of the Soul Expansion series I was doing a couple of years ago, it's going to be similar to that. We have a theme for the month, which is the expansion timeline and that's really what February and most of 2019 is all about have I been doing my work have I been paying attention have I been referring and referencing and indexing and accessing my internal place to help me know like what is my creation right now where am I proceeding from what am I rooted and grounded into is it your truth is it your sense of truth? Because what? Only you know what truth feels like. And for those of you that were part of the um, emotional architecture workshop for January, 
February is going to be an amazing next level to build on. So the, um, the energy gathering for February, it's live. I'll put the link in the description. It's currently live on my Facebook. You can also go to my event, Bright Andrew Martin Energy, and sign up there. So it's four Sundays. You can do each Sunday individually. I think it's 25 bucks for a session, or you can do all four of them for a reduced rate, which I think it comes out to about $20 per session. I may be off on my numbers, but it's somewhere around there. Anyway, February energy gathering is really about getting in there, rooting in there, opening it up and really looking at, okay, where can I expand? Where perhaps am I still holding myself apart from what I desire, still holding myself apart from my truth? Where am I still sort of in fear? Where am I still clenched? Where am I still defensive? Where am I still resistant? So February energy gathering is going to be all about sort of getting in there and opening up and finding where am I standing in my own way? Where are these things that I call a block or a barrier? Where are the things that I feel like are still sort of wonky and uneven and unstable? And that's what we're going to be looking at. That's what we're going to be exploring. And the energy work for February, I have a sense, is going to be all about continuing to knock down those walls, continuing to expand, continuing to raise our own level of awareness, right? Continuing to rise up, continuing to meet the challenge that we are setting for ourselves. If you haven't grasped the fundamental concept yet that your spiritual experience, your relationship is just between you and you. A lack of faith or trust in the universe is a lack of faith or trust in myself. A lack of faith or trust in myself manifests as a lack of faith or trust in my experience out here, right? So this is about you and the rest of you. This is about exploring the relationship with yourself and not just you as the human. You as the human is this much of the picture. If you are still only invested in your human perspective, that's like looking through the keyhole and thinking that you can see the whole room. So in many ways, February and the energy gathering is in support of that is about going, wait a minute, I need to really pull back here and raise my perspective and get that bird's eye view of look at the whole picture. And what happens when I expand beyond that minimized perspective of the human self, the smaller self, when I'm looking through that keyhole and thinking, oh yeah, I got it all, I see it all, I got it all figured out. Well, what happens when you expand? What happens when you dial up? What happens when you zoom out and go to that bird's eye perspective? You can see the whole picture. And not only can you see the whole picture, but you can expand beyond any sense of limitation. You can expand beyond the sense of what you previously thought was possible or what you were capable of, or what you could have, what you could be, what you could do. In many ways, we're also being called to sort of amend or rewrite our goals or our dreams or our visions for ourselves, right? It's like we've been deciding like, oh, well, I want this much. But what we're really realizing is, oh, actually, I can have more and I want more and I'm curious about more and I want to explore more. And I'm not just talking about material things. I think it's interesting that our minds often immediately go to the material when we're talking about having more. While that certainly is a part of it. This is about the fullness of yourself. This is about living in and resting in and existing in this field of energy, this field of your presence, this field of your fullness moving through you at all times, remembering that you are the eyes, the ears, the mouth, the hands, the fingers of the universe. Without you, the history of all that is would be incomplete. And it really is about, I posted this um, a couple days ago, or maybe it was a week ago, I don't know. What is time? I don't even know. I feel like I saw something posted on Facebook this morning that was like, wow, January was a hell of a year. <laughs> it really, thumbs up, heart emoji, poop emoji, unicorn emoji, if you feel like January has been like, I mean, one of those months where I was like, good God, is it ever gonna end? And yes, it will. And yes, it is. And here we are evolving into February of 2019. And like I said, in many ways, February and kind of 2019 is starting to shape up as this is the year of homework assignment. And I'm not talking about sitting by yourself in your room and journaling and, you know, doing that sort of insular, isolated, solitary thing. When I'm talking about homework and I'm talking about, it's like putting that to action. What did we talk about in January? It is meditation in action. It is the state that you have worked so hard to achieve, the vibration that you have worked so hard to elevate yourself to, the void that you have cleared within yourself, all the work that you've been doing to clear out and release and heal and surrender and align and blah, 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 blah. 
Now it's not just about sitting and activating that within. Now it's not just about envisioning or dreaming or calling it into picture. Now it's about putting it into action. Now it's about putting it into form. Now it's about walking around with that truth in my pocket, with that belief in my pocket, with that curiosity, that understanding, my willingness to show up and investigate and interrogate my experience and say, hmm, is this the best that I can have? Is this the clearest I can be? Is this the most aligned with my truth that I can be in this moment, right? So in many ways, February and 2019 is really all about this big transition, this big shift, this sort of final reorientation towards the truth. Because here's what I say, and here's what I believe. In every moment with every choice, only one of two things is happening. I'm either moving towards my truth or away from it. And the only way oftentimes that I know is by how I feel. And that's what so much of we talked about in the Emotional Architecture Workshop for those of you that were participating that in January. And that is like the corner of all of my work, all of my practice. And it's what we talk a lot about in the Mastery Mentorship Program is that when you are in these moments as we are right now, when you are in this phase of moving away from the old and reorienting yourself towards the new, you're reorienting yourself away from the illusion, which is the non-truth, towards your truth, which is your truth. And what only you know what that feels like. The only thing oftentimes that we can be clear on is how do I feel right now? Or how do I want to feel right now? Or how do I predominantly feel? And would I like to change that? Would I like to shift that? Would I like to raise what is possible? Would I like to let myself out of the limitations that I am still investing in, that I am still holding on to? The limitation, the struggle, the difficulty is not holding you. It is you that are holding the struggle. It is you that are holding the limitation. It is you that are holding the, that is holding the difficulty. So when we allow ourselves, to me, resistance is this. Resistance is I am clenched, I've got a death grip, and I'm trying like hell to squeeze something out of it. So it's this, right? It's rawr. <laughs> it's not Lady Gaga, but it is sort of, rawr. to me, that's resistance. It's like, I'm going to grasp. I'm going to grab. I want to fight. I want to scratch. I want to harm. I want to hurt. I want to shred. That is resistance. To me, acceptance is when I turn those hands and I say, yes, I would love that. Yes, thank you. That is wonderful. Thank you for the offer, but no, I don't want that, right? So when I am in acceptance, when I am in surrender, I am just allowing life to move through me, and then I get to decide what it is that's going to stay, what it is that I'm going to hang on to, what it is that I'm going to expand, to nurture, to nourish, and to grow. That's what acceptance is. That's what uh, surrender is. Just saying, okay, Life moves through me. I am the vessel for consciousness to move through. So I'm going to let it all move through me. And anything that is less than love will resolve or dissolve. And I certainly will be called to take action. And I certainly will be called to respond to my experience. And that's the key. The ego reacts. The heart responds. The ego gets defensive. The ego wants to push back. The ego wants to say, no, destroy it, kill it. The heart says, what is this? What is this thing that I call a block? What is this thing that is creating so much difficulty or challenge? What is this thing that I'm resistant to? What is this thing that I'm trying to push away? Let me be curious. Let me open up. Let me receive it. Because the heart knows the truth. The heart knows what we are capable of. The heart knows what we can say yes to. The heart knows what we can handle. The heart knows the truth, right? The heart is the portal to the divine self, to the creator self. So if I want the real real, if I want the real tea, then I'm going to accept it. I'm going to open up. I'm going to expand my awareness. And then I'm going to ask the question. So in many ways, February is not new information. In many ways, February is sort of going into the archive of our experience. And what I mean by that is our conscious experience, our deliberate experience. When we think about, okay, here I am. I'm the master creator. I'm remembering how to manifest. I'm remembering how to, to create. I'm remembering how to receive. I'm remembering the truth that my emotions are the bedrock of my creations. I'm, I'm remembering that my truth is the thing that I root into. And when I root into my truth and I build and I create from my truth, then I am creating something 
something that will stand the test of time. I am creating something that is indelible and infallible and will go on. Because if it is created from love, which truth and love are the same thing, if I am creating something from love and from truth, that's when it is sustained. That's when it perpetuates and goes on. It is those things that are built on illusion that are falling. It is those things that are built on untruths, on exclusion that are falling. So February... There's some questions that we can ask ourselves and there's some perspectives that we can take for February to really begin the, acti the active, actual, hands in it, hands on it, creating it. I'm moving from concept. I'm moving from, you know, the drawing board. I'm moving from the vision board, from the idea, from the abstraction, and I'm moving into making it real. One of the biggest questions, and I think one of the biggest challenges we can ask or take on for ourselves in February especially is, where am I still taking life personally? And what I mean by that is when I come from my creator perspective, when I come from my expanded perspective, when I come from the true place, the truth of who and what I am as the, internal, in, the eternal infinite creator, I see that it's not about taking it personally. It's like the weather, right? It's raining today. I had some plans to go out and run errands today. Now, were I to take that personally, I could get all bit out of shape and what the fuck and what's happening and I hate the rain and what's going on and damn it, the Mbaba, you know, I could take it personally. That's the perspective of the small self. That's the perspective of the limited self. The limited self is always going to go into the reflexive, defensive, I'm a victim, I am powerless, why me, what's going on, I can't do it, I can't handle it. The creator self, the expanded self, the true self looks at it and goes, oh, it's raining. Okay, what am I gonna do in the rain today? How am I gonna respond to the rain today? What am I going to do to make the best of the fact that it's raining without taking it personally, without having to bring it home with me? And what I mean by that is if you're taking your work home with you, even if you are an entrepreneur, look, I know, I know what that means literally to take my work home with me. I live and I work and I sleep and I eat and, you know, this is where I live and work. But I don't have to take it home with me. So give me a thumbs up or give me a heart emoji. Give me something. Unicorns, poop, stars, I don't know. Um, Chinese dragon, it's the year of the pig. Give me a pig. If you are ready to move beyond that perspective of take it personally, if you are ready to move on from that small, limited perspective, taking it personally is like looking through the keyhole and thinking that you see the whole room. What another person thinks about me is none of my fucking business. You know, there's certainly there's part of me that cares. Certainly there's part of me that wants to be liked. Certainly there's part of me that's saying, but why? I'm a good person. What's going on? But I don't have to take it personally. I don't have to have, I don't have to let the opinions of another become my truth. I don't have to let the ex expectations of another become my reality. So where in life am I still taking it personally? Where in life am I getting pissed off about little things? Where in life am I disempowering myself so that I can be bummed out, so that I can pout, so that I can have a tantrum? Now, what that points me in the direction of where am I still taking life personally is an opportunity for me to look at what wound is active right now. Because unless I am hanging on to some sort of pain, there's nothing for me to respond with from that place of being a victim or being disempowered or being angry or being hurt. Now, this is not to minimize the fact that you might be angry or hurt or be in pain or still have something active, some sort of victim consciousness. Not at all an indictment. What it actually is, is giving you an opportunity to say, oh, you know what? Every time someone talks about that thing or every time I have that experience, I get triggered. Something happens. I take it personally and I get all sideways and I get all wonky. Then that is your opportunity to look at that part of yourself and ask it. What is it about me that you know that I seem to have forgotten? What is it that you have that I haven't paid attention to? What pain are you still holding on to that I haven't experienced yet, that I haven't allowed myself to feel so that it can move through me and up and out? This is also when we talk about things like a block or a barrier. And, you know, it's funny because 
I was trying to get my head around today's video. And to be perfectly honest, I was putting it off. I've been sitting, what, I woke up this morning at like 7.30. I've been drinking my coffee for what, seven, eight, nine, four hours now. <laughs> yes, I do math on my fingers. Um, and I was putting this off. I didn't want to do it because I didn't feel like I had, you know, I always feel like I need a hook. I always feel like I need some sort of theme. I need a message. I need a, a point of departure. And I couldn't really find it. I started to feel, and I was doing exactly that. I was feeling disempowered. I was feeling like I can't do it. I was feeling like I'm going to let people down. I was, and I was taking it personally. And then I remembered what a really, really wise mentor told me years ago. And he said, Andrew, this work has nothing to do with you. He said, when you show up in front of a client or a group or a, a, a class or an event or a workshop or whatever, he said, it has nothing to do with you. Your job is to show up and let it come through. It's not about the Andrew show. It's not about Andrew's agenda. It's not about Andrew's ego or the small self feeling validated and feeling puffed up so that I can feel important. It's about me showing up in service and trusting that what comes through is what needs to come through. My job is to be the receiver for what it is that you bring forth through your seeking. Whether that's an individual or a group, it doesn't matter. So I had to get really clear with myself and ask myself, why am I taking this personally? Why am I still feeling defensive? Why am I feeling resistant? Is it because I don't think I have the things that I, right? It's all in the mind. The mind was thinking, well, Andrew, but you don't have a theme and you don't have this and you don't have that and you're not ready and you're not prepared. And I thought, you know what? But that's kind of the point here, right? That's sort of the beauty of what I do is me being prepared is me doing my own work. Me being prepared is knowing what truth feels like. Me being prepared is doing what I need to do to be the clear channel that I am. But once I show up, all I got to do is open up to receive. So where are you still taking life personally? And wherever that is, that shows you where the block is. That shows you where the barrier is. It shows you where you're trying to push up against the same old thing, the same old thing. And here's the trick. Two things that I want you to understand here. Number one, a block or a barrier or a hurdle is really just a part of yourself that you don't recognize. The thing that stops you on your path, you're going along and everything's good and then bam, off the center, off the rocker, knocked out of the middle, you're flailing, you're, you're spinning, you're grasping, you're desperate, stop. It's just a part of yourself that you don't recognize. It's just a part of yourself that's saying, hey Andrew, there's something that I need you to know. There's something that I need you to remember. There's something that I need you to listen to, to hear, to feel, to sense. Because what I have is going to serve you but you gotta stop for a second and you gotta open up and you gotta receive it. And once you receive it, then you understand it. And when you understand it, you no longer fear it. And when you no longer fear it, it no longer controls you. And then we take it to the next level. Once I understand the thing that I've been calling a block, guess what? Now it's not a block anymore, now it's a stepping stone. And as I allow myself to receive that truth that's coming from myself, what I perceive as a block out here is just an aspect of myself that has called something to me so that it can mirror it to me. Because for whatever reason, I'm not getting the message internally, so self says, okay, well then I gotta make it an, ex an external experience. If Andrew's not paying attention to the nudges and the impulses and the little you know, pokes that I'm giving him in the ribs, internally, if he's not listening, if he's not paying attention, if he's resistant, whether consciously or unconsciously, all right, well, we gotta step it up a notch. Now we gotta make it an external experience of something coming to him to get his attention. Right? First God throws a pebble, then a stone, then a rock, then a boulder. So it gets louder and louder and louder until we pay attention and we get the message. So then the block becomes a stepping stone because once I have heard the message, once I have felt it or sensed it, received it, allowed it, whatever it is, now I begin the process of integrating that understanding, of integrating that information, of embracing and bringing that knowledge to me, and bing, now that's a stepping stone, and now I stand on top of it. 
And guess what? It's a whole new level of awareness and of consciousness. So move towards the things that make you uncomfortable. Move in the direction of your discomfort. Become really, really curious about the things that feel blocked or stuck within you. Look for the resistance. Open up to receive it so that it can resolve and dissolve. Can you hear that rain? That is crazy how hard it's raining today. So once you open up, and once you let go of the old stuff, once you let go of the old heavy density and the lower aspects and the lower thinking and the lower beliefs and the lower ideas, and again, we're not thinking that lower is better or, or worse. We're just thinking it's like a scale, right? It's a ladder of my experience. And guess what happens? Once I let go of all that stuff, I create a void. And there's a space here. And this is kind of what we talked about in January, right? In January, I was talking to you, it was like, don't let what shows up become a limitation. And we talked about the $5, right? When I am in my creator, powerful space, then $5 is the beginning of an empire. When I am in my lower self, when I am in my pain, when I am in my feelings, when I am in victim mode, when I am in, in disempowered mode, when I am in reactor mode, here's the T, Reactor and creator are spelled with the exact same words, or excuse me, letters. It's just that one is an entirely different perspective than the other. When I am in reactor mode, life is happening to me. It's your fault. It's his fault. This sucks. Oh God, what's happening? Oh my God, sky is falling. Crying wolf, all of those things. But when I am in creator mode, then it's an opportunity. When I'm in creator mode, it is the beginning. When I'm in creator mode, is it an opportunity to be curious and to meet myself where I am when I am in reactor mode? The same $5 that the creator used to build an empire when I'm in reactor mode, those $5 become the last $5 I will ever have and I've got to squeeze as much as I can out of them and it's fear and it's anxiety and it's, oh my God, I am powerless. I just have to sit here and wait for the money to show up. When you're in reactor mode, you're taking it personally. You're bracing for impact. Every shadow becomes something dangerous. Every opportunity becomes another, you know, opportunity to fail. When I'm in creator mode, man, the world is my oyster. There's nothing that I can't accomplish. When I'm in creator mode, I welcome the challenge. When I'm creator mode, I look for the discomfort and I move towards it so that it can be resolved or dissolved. It's all just about changing the way that you look at things because what, this is a Wayne Dyer quote, I believe, when you change the way the look, you look at things, the things you look at change. So when that space has been cleared, and all the old fears and all the old stuff, right? 2018 brought us face to face with that, right? And we just had to, we had to love it. We had to integrate it. We had to accept it. We had to experience it. We had to open up to it. And we had to let it move through us. And when it moved through us, it took all the icky, sticky, funky, junky stuff out with it. Oh, and now the field has been cleared. And now I have this beautiful, beautiful space with which to create. I have this beautiful acre that's all plowed and, and cleared and ready to go. And guess what happens? The mind freaks the fuck out. You know, there's that saying, nature abhors a vacuum. I would say it's not nature that abhors a vacuum. I would say it's the mind that abhors a vacuum. The mind gets really, really anxious. If there's an empty spot within me, if I've got a void, let's say I have this big old hunk of mess that was an old story of how worthless and unlovable I am. And then I do all my job to work around it, to dig it up, to dig it up, to love it, to accept it, to investigate it, to open it up and to move it out of my field. And now I have this big space and the mind starts to freak out. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, there's something there. What is that? Oh my God, there's something we have to put. What is that? We have to put something in there. Oh my God, hurry up, hurry up, put, it, put something in there. Oh my God, we can't have this empty space. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And guess what? The mind doesn't care if what I put in there is an old ancient story about how Andrew is this and he's horrible and awful and a victim and powerless and blah, 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 blah. The mind doesn't care. So the challenge is don't let the void, 
Don't let the absence of what you desire become evidence that you cannot have it or that it is not coming or that it will never arrive or that it just sucks because you're a piece of shit and that's just the life that you have to live. Thumbs up or heart emoji if you're ready to let all of that negative narrative go. Right? No. You're a beautiful, amazing, powerful, wonderful creator who wanted the challenge of a human experience because you were ready for it. So when I've got this void, when I have this big empty open field, I can very easily go into reactor mode. I can very easily go into hoarder mode of like, let's just fill the shit up. I don't care. Just put something there because it's making me anxious. Because a void requires what? Discipline. The void requires conscious, deliberate focus. One of the things that we talk about in the Emotional Architecture Workshop and that we talk about in the Master Mentory Mastership Program is that, or Mastery Mentorship Program, is moving towards being consciously competent. I'm a creator who knows who I am, I know how to do it, and I can repeat my success and recre recreate my success over and over and over. And because I am consciously competent, I can also teach you how to do it or I can at least share with you how I did it so that you can then take the raw materials of how I did it and turn it into your own solution, turn it into your own tool. So don't let the absence of what you desire, don't let the absence of something, don't let that void become a negative thing. You gotta stay focused to keep that space clear. So here's the image I saw this morning as I was meditating. I was saying, okay, spirit, like I was feeling really anxious. I was feeling really nervous. Like I don't have a hook, right? I don't have a hook to, to share with everyone. What is it, you know, what is it, you know, because if you listen to all the, the marketing noise out there, well, you've got 0.2 seconds to get your client's attention. You've got 3.5 minutes to blah, 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 whatever. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's this false sense of pressure that I put on myself because someone said on Instagram that this is what I have to do if I'm an entrepreneur. And then if I don't have your attention in the first five seconds with a hook or something that you're going to leave me, don't leave me. <laughs> so I could lead with that fear. I could lead with that panic or I could say, you know what, spirit, you've never let me down. You've never let me down. So why on earth am I assuming that now you would let me down? So I went into meditation and I closed my eyes and I dropped in and I said, okay, bring it on. And man, boop, 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 boop. the images just started coming in. The energy that came in was so mega powerful. I was like, whoa, okay. I guess all I had to do was stop and take a breath and ask. That's the other thing. Don't forget to ask you guys. Don't forget that you are not in it alone. Yes, we are powerful master creators. But if you think about it, even the greatest athlete on the planet, the gold medalist in whatever sport still has a coach. They still have a mentor. They still have someone that they look up to and ask for insight or guidance or whatever. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to look at myself and I'm going to ask that. So I, you know, I just had to remind myself. I had to be reminded. So the image that I saw was someone building a structure, but what they had in front of them was the blueprint that they had created. So it was like, okay, we're building the structure out here. Okay, that looks good, that looks good. Wait a minute, no, 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 I don't like that. I don't like that, why don't you like that? So then everyone's like, well, what's going on? Well, I don't know, let me refer to my blueprint. Let me make sure the blueprint that's in here, right? This is the primary reality. This is the secondary reality. The primary reality always informs the secondary reality. So if what's out here, here's the, the trick, here's the key, here's the T. If what is out here does not match what is going on in here from that feeling perspective, if I go, man, this just doesn't feel right. You know, forget what it looks like, forget what it sounds like, forget the physicality of it for a moment, right? Because oftentimes things show up in a package that we had no way of knowing that's how it was gonna fall, you know, show up, right? So it's not so much about saying, well, it doesn't look like this, so it can't be that. No, feel into it, feel into it. And if you are getting that nudge, that sinking feeling, that little thing of like, you know what, something's just not quite right here. I know it all looks good on paper and people are saying, oh yeah, that's wonderful, but it doesn't feel right to me, then you stop. And you say, I'm just gonna check in. So you go back in here and you look at your blueprint and you say, okay. And if you've done your emotional architecture, if you've done the work, then you have that blueprint. That's what the emotional architecture is. Hello, when things out here aren't making sense and they're not giving you what you said you wanted or what you thought was showing up, then you go back in and you check in. What did I, de what did I decide? 
that I wanted my experience to feel like, with the sensation, the energy, the feeling, the emotion around it. What is it that I said that I wanted my container for my experience to be? Does it match what's going on out here? No, then refer back to the blueprint. Take a minute, push pause, press stop and say, hold up everybody, take five, I gotta go back in and get right with what's going on in here. We've got the time this year to make those last minute decisions. We've got the space this year to say, to take it easy. And what I mean by that is, you know, what is that, that, that quote? I think it's a Lao Tzu quote that says, you know, nature never hurries and yet everything gets done. Don't let the pressure and the panic of the mind that's saying, go, 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 do, 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 act, act, act. Yeah, okay, sure. Yes, girl, I know I got to take action for a second, but you need to slow your roll so that I can get right with myself first. And the minute that anything out here doesn't quite feel right, it feels wonky, there's something, my, my shoulders are around my ears, there's a knot in my gut, I'm getting the tap on the shoulder saying, Andrew, stop. Okay, what's up? Does this feel, does this give me the sensation, does this have the energy or the emotion that I said that I wanted? When I am actively creating and something goes sideways, that's an opportunity for me to go in and ask again, what's going on in here? What is it that wants my attention? What is it that's asking for expression? What is it that needs my truth here? And once I open up, once I understand, once my clarity comes in, then I get back to external forward momentum. So this year, and February especially, because, you know, I, I, I very often feel like the new year doesn't really begin into lunar, until Lunar New Year. And Lunar New Year's in just a few days. It's next week. I think it's the 4th or the 5th, or maybe the 6th. I'm not sure, but it's within the first week of February. So I really feel like as we move more towards the Lunar New Year, that's when things are going to start to move forward. And I know that January for many of us was this really strange feeling like I moved in one direction, then another one. I'm pushed, I'm pulled, I'm, you know, pushed down the, the path and then all of a sudden I have to stop. It was a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of tying up loose ends in January. And frankly, I always feel like January is just a transition anyway. I don't ever really feel like it's a real month. Thumbs up, heart emoji, fire uh, cracker emoji rainbow emoji if you agree. If you felt like January was like, well, this is weird. This just isn't what I expected, but okay, whatever, right? I'm not going to take it personally. If there's something that is calling me to take it personally, that usually means that there's some pain there. That usually means that there's something unresolved within me that allows me to attach to it. So if it snags my awareness, right? If it catches my awareness, then that means there's something there that's unresolved for me. So just... Allow life to move through you. Allow it to move through you. Which, by the way, this is the year of the boar, the pig in Chinese astrology. And I'm a boar, so I'm super excited. This is going to be a really powerful year. Especially if you're a boar. But do your own... Do your own research on Chinese astrology. I, for one, am very excited. So yeah, if you're triggered, if you're snagged, if you're hooked, it just means that there's something in you that is a little sticky and a little rough and it's asking you for something. So you just go in there and you sit with it and you smooth out those edges. But it really is one deliberate step at a time. So if the blueprint that you have created for yourself does not match or vice versa. If what you are building and what is coming in is consistently not matching the blueprint that you've created, stop. It's your creation. You have every right to push pause. Okay, what's going on in here? I need to get right with myself. And there's a really simple meditation. I'm going to share this with you. We're going to do a little quick guided meditation. So what I always do is whenever I feel like something is outside of me, whenever I feel like there's something that I want, but I can't quite figure out how to get there, right? It's like, well, I don't know what that feels like. I don't, you know, it's like when people say after age, well, I've never been this age before. <laughs> this is the oldest I have ever been in this lifetime. So how on earth would I know how to act my age, right? So, but... When there's something that feels like you can't quite get there, you don't quite understand it, or you can't quite make that connection, it's about expanding your energy field beyond it. Because once my energy field encompasses it, now it is something that I am integrating. Now it is something that I am pulling to me. So the minute that I now see it as something that's already within me, because girl, that's the truth. Everything that you require 
exists only in this moment right now. And if it's not the finished product of what you require, then the seeds to plant to create it are here in this moment right now. So this idea that my satisfaction, my power, my completion, my fulfillment is always over there, my guidance, my insight, my clarity is somewhere down the line or tomorrow or yesterday or over there, no. When you expand your energy field in the moment to encompass what it is that you feel is lacking or not present within your experience, or when you're saying, I don't know, I don't know how to activate that because I don't know what it feels like or looks like or sounds like, when you move your energy field beyond it, now I encompass it. Now it is something that is within me and now it's only a matter of time before it begins to open itself up, to unbox itself and reveal itself to me. And as it reveals itself to me, I get to know it. And guess what? As I get to know it, as I connect with it, as I really make that connection and I move towards consciously competent, now I begin to integrate it. Now it begins to weave itself into my energy field. And even though my conscious, logical, rational thinking mind may still not have what it thinks that it needs to understand it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Science still can't explain how gravity works. And yet here we are within the field of gravity. So once you expand your energy field beyond it, that's when you begin to be able to wrap your arms around it and pull it towards yourself. I mean, if that's not fucking magic, I don't know what is. <laughs> so the keys for February, before we get into this little exercise I wanna share with you guys. <clears throat> the keys for February are asking yourself, where am I still taking my life personally because the minute that I'm taking it personally I am anchored into my lower smaller minimized perspective the human is the only thing that takes it personally the human is the only part of us that sees everything as a personal affront the human is the only part of us that's always bracing for impact so when I'm feeling resistant or, ugh, or ugh, sideways contracted compacted oppressed repressed whatever just stop okay what's going on here sit with it become curious about it, open it up. Once you move that out of your field and now you have the void, now you have the field is all cleared and ready to plant, be really, really focused and deliberate about what thoughts and beliefs are trying to wiggle their way back in there so that they can take root. Because the mind doesn't care if you're happy. The mind only cares that you are in an experience that is predictable and knowable and controllable because the mind equates that with safety. Now the heart says, dude, bring it on. I don't care if I don't know because I know the truth of who I am. I'm the one that created this in the first place. So what I, if I don't like what I'm experiencing, then I can recreate it. So when I am in my feelings, when I'm taking it personally, when I'm in that lower place, that's I'm just in my human perspective. So let me dial it up a notch. Let me go up to a larger, more expanded perspective. Let me see myself through my fullness. Let me see myself through the eyes of who and what I really am. And oh, that just puts it back in perspective. That creates the shift in perspective. So in many ways, it's like you're just looking through a faceted gem, right? And every time that I turn the, the gem to look through a new facet, I go, oh, there's a whole new perspective. So don't take it personally, and when you do take it personally, or when you have a reaction where you're in your feelings and you're, hmm, investigate that, be curious about that. Allow the void to exist. Allow the void to be there. Get comfortable with the unknown. Get comfortable with the incomplete. Just let that space be. And don't take it personally. And when you feel a block, and when you feel a barrier, just remember, oh, there's a part of myself that shows up here that I haven't met before. I'm gonna become curious about it and I'm gonna investigate it. I'm gonna to get to know that part of myself because what? A barrier, a block is really just a stepping stone. And the minute that I scale that level of awareness through my own investigative work, through my own internal process, now it becomes something I can stand on and I go, oh my God, look at that. A whole new world. <laughs> Please don't sue me, Disney. <laughs> Give me a mermaid emoji. Mm. So that's really what February is about. And that's why the February Energy Gathering has four 
dates instead of just one because we are going to be exploring these concepts. We are going to be exploring manifestation. We are going to be working with the fields of expansion and, lim and limitlessness. We are going to be getting into our own personal stuff and opening it up and pushing those barriers out, pushing those boundaries down, climbing over them so that we can stand on them. So the February energy gathering is a combination of question and answer, intuitive insight and discussion, and powerful, powerful energy work. And here's the beautiful thing about the sound healing and the energy work, everyone, is that it doesn't require the mind to understand it for it to work. The energy work that comes through and the energy gatherings works at the level of energy. It works at the non-physical level. So it isn't something that the mind has to understand for it to happen, for it to work, for it to be effective and to create the shift. And then lastly, I'm going to share with you this quick meditation. Um, and this is something that I'm just offering up to you as a tool for you to experiment and play with. By no means do you have to replay this every single time you want to do the meditation. You can. And it's not going to be super long. It's just a couple minutes because I want to give you the tool so that you can then run with it. Because what? Teach someone to fish, you feed them for... Or what? Give someone a fish, you feed them for a day. Teach someone to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. And that is my whole point, you guys. My number one goal from the beginning of this has been to get people to the point where they don't need me because I'm not really special in the sense that I can do something that you can't. It's just that I came here in this lifetime with some switches flipped on so that I could show you, so that I could walk down the path ahead of you and then come back and say, oh, okay, this is what I think is coming. This is what you might want to be prepared for. This is what you should keep your eyes open for. Here's how I did it. If this works for you, awesome. Take it and run with it or take what works for you, lead the rest. I don't really care, right? Because ultimately only you know what truth feels like and you came here to have the journey of yourself. You came here to have the experience that only you can have. You came here through your human experience to add to the history of all that is and all that was and all that ever will be. So this is between you and you. This is about your connection with yourself. And my job is to be the conduit to show you where that connection is, to, to help guide you to it, to walk with you, to lead you, to push you. I don't know, it depends on what you need, right? Sometimes it's walking shoulder to shoulder. Sometimes it's me pulling you saying, no, come on, let's go. Sometimes it's me pushing you. But ultimately your relationship and your spiritual experience is just between you and you. So that's why I offer up these tools and these insights and these perspectives so that you can take it and run with it. So that you now have something new to open up. And that's why I say the work that I do, it can help you start making changes in your life starting today, right today, right now. So whether through mastery mentorship or one-on-one -on -one sessions or the online classes and workshops, whatever is vibing with you, whatever feels like the thing that you want to do, do that because I know I can help. So, thumbs up, heart emoji, if you're ready for this little meditation that I want to walk you through. I know you are. I don't need to, ask, to, have, to answer that question. I know you're ready. I just had to get the last bit of my coffee. Mmm, and coconut oil. I put coconut oil in my coffee, and so the last little bit's like lip gloss. <laughs> All right, my crazy self. I was going to guide you through. <laughs> Gosh, I'm so weird, you guys. I don't even know. I cracked myself up. Yesterday was all day me just like I was sort of, sort of trapped at home because I had all this stuff to do around the house. So I was inside most of the day and I was like, by the end of the day, I was like, I am just a lunatic. I'm just a crazy person talking to myself and making myself laugh and telling myself jokes. Okay. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> So um, <clears throat> for the guided meditation, all you have to do is hear the sound of my voice. doesn't matter if you can see me or not. And all you're going to do is just sit here and listen. So go ahead and close your eyes. <sighs> and we're just going to focus, allow our awareness to be present. We're going to do some focus breathing together. I like to do inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth just to get a nice cycle of breath going. And when you're inhaling, breathe all the way in. Imagine that you've got a set of lungs at the top of your head. And so you're drawing that breath in through the top of your head all the way down to the bottom of your feet. And then in the exhale, imagine the opposite, that you're pushing that breath out the body through the top of the head. 
And we're gonna do three breaths together in through the nose and out through the mouth, just to bring our awareness, our energy, and our focus to this moment right here. So we'll start with the deep breath in through the nose. Ah. Letting it all go through the mouth. Using your breath to bring your awareness to your body. <clears throat> to bring yourself fully present in this moment right here, right now. Do another breath in through the nose. Ah. And out through the mouth. Letting it all fall away. Just allowing yourself to arrive fully in this moment. Right here, right now. And then one more breath in through the nose. <sighs> and out through the mouth. Now let your breath and your body find their natural rhythm. If you find your mind wandering or you find the mental chatter distracting you, just use your breath to bring yourself back to the moment. Meditation is a practice. Some days it's gonna be easier than others to find that stillness. Just let it be. Stillness always exists. Stillness is always here. We just tend to cover it up with a whole bunch of noise and distractions. We just allow ourselves to tune into that stillness. Eventually it shows up. <clears throat> so I want you to bring your awareness to your sternum, right below the heart and right above the solar plexus. So the solar plexus chakra is about three fingers above the belly button. The heart chakra is in the center of the chest between the pectoral muscles. So right below the heart chakra and right above the solar plexus is the sternum. I choose the sternum because whenever I'm focused and when I'm connected, when I talk about you know finding that connection and finding that still place, for me it's always a sense of it being here in the abdomen, in my torso. So I offer up the way that works for me to you. And if you have another way of accessing stillness, that's fine, but this is how I do it. So focus on the sternum. As you breathe, imagine that your breath is moving in and out of that space in the body. Feel yourself relaxing as you breathe in and out of the sternum. Bring your shoulders down from your ears. <sighs> Let your shoulders drop. Unclench your jaw. Remove your tongue from the roof of your mouth. Let your fingers go limp. Let your buttocks unclench and relax. Let your hips loosen up and relax. It's amazing where we hold tension without even really being aware of it. Oh, there we go. Just let the tension and the stress fall out of your body. Just like water sliding down a window. And that tension just leaves the body. Focusing then on the sternum. Feeling that sense of connection. Anchored and rooted into your own sense of self. And if this is your first time with exploring that sense of connection, it's okay if you can't find it right away. Practice, 
practice, practice. So focusing on the sternum, I want you to imagine that you see a little ball of light there. Just a little pinprick, like a star in the sky. You just see this little point of light. There it goes. See it starting to twinkle and sparkle. <clears throat> Keep breathing in and out of that spot. And as you're breathing in and out, imagine that you're blowing on an ember in a fire. That little spark, that little nugget of light. Imagine that you're blowing on it and as you inhale and as you exhale, it gets brighter and it gets bigger. You slowly see that little ember starting to grow. <clears throat> now that little pinpoint of light begins to expand. It's getting bigger and brighter as it moves down your torso into your stomach, as it moves up your torso into your heart and your chest. Seeing that expand, feel it getting brighter. Now see it as a bubble of light. It moves up into your shoulders and your neck and your head. As you breathe, it expands down into your hips, your thighs, your knees, your calves your shins, down your ankles, all the way now to the tips of your toes. Your body is filled with light. It's like a thousand stars held in your body. Continuing to breathe, now see that bubble of light expanding beyond your physical body. Moving beyond the limitations of your vessel. See that field of light expanding, expanding in all directions, front to back, side to side, top to bottom, 360 degrees in all directions. Now see that bubble of light growing. See yourself held and suspended within this field of light. Feel your energy field as it expands beyond the body, beyond the room, beyond the building, beyond your house. Feel the expansion of your energy field now as it moves towards that desire. What is that thing that you want? What is it that feels so out of reach? What is it that feels so impossible? Imagine it standing before you. You can see it as a person or a ball of light or a field of color. Whatever image you have in your mind is an avatar for that desire. Just let whatever shows up be the right thing. See it standing about three feet in front of you. We're gonna do three breaths together. We're gonna do in through the nose and out through the mouth. And on the exhale, I want you to make a forceful sound with the breath, like right? And on the exhale, when you make that sound, imagine that you are moving your field closer and closer towards the thing that you desire, the thing that you want to call in for yourself. And as we move forward with those breaths on that forceful exhale, your field is moving closer and closer and closer to the thing that you desire. And on the third breath, you will see that your energy field now moves beyond it and encompasses now, embraces now, and holds the thing that you desire. So we're going to do a, a big breath in through the nose.
see your energy field expanding, getting larger and larger and bigger and bigger on that exhale. Now another breath in through the nose. See your energy field getting larger in all directions, top, bottom, left, right, up, down, back, and front. And now one more breath, and on this last exhale, your field is now going to move beyond the thing that you desire, and it is going to begin to draw it to you as it encompasses it. And there it is. Now within your energy field, within the field of your consciousness, within the field of your awareness, as you let the fullness of your creator self join you as you expand your field, now you see that the thing that you desire is within your reach because now it is within your field of energy. And over the next couple of days and weeks and months and maybe even years, who knows how long it will take for this thing to manifest, but that doesn't matter. Because the truth is, is now that you house it within your energy field, it is something that you can begin to open up and unbox and unravel and integrate. So all you're doing is setting the intention Creator self, higher self, guides, angels, the universe, whatever you call that. I now set the intention that whatever it is that I have brought into my field, the desired outcome, the desired experience, the desired object, I trust that over the next days and weeks and months to come, that in the right way and in the right time, this will unravel and unfold and reveal itself to me and the steps that I need to take to call it into my reality will present themselves at the right moment and the right time. And so it is. So use your breath to come back. Use your breath to come back to your awareness. Sorry, Instagram, you guys got cut off. <laughs> I think we went over an hour. I think Instagram only lets it be an hour. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you. That was the exercise that I wanted to give you. It's a super, super simple one. Play with it, have fun with it, experiment with it, and just know that whenever you feel like something's out of your reach, just expand your field to now include it. So that's it. I'm gonna put all the links for um, everything in the description. The February Energy Gathering is live and it's available for registration. Mastery Mentorship is open. I have spots available. One-on-one -on -one sessions, energy sessions, intuitive sessions, whatever it is that you're seeking, I know I can help you find it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Mwah!